So we have an air standard diesel cycle operates with principal states, with state one being the start of the compression stroke. So we can go ahead and go ahead and always make sure that we have the diagrams down for these cycles. It's a little long there. One to two to three to four for the diesel cycle. And they give us a table. So here's state one, then state two, three, and four. Let's check out the values of pressure. 85, then it jumps way up. And then two and three have the same pressure. Does that make sense? And then it dumps back down to state four. The pressure at state four, though, is still higher than the pressure at state one. Let's take a look at the temperatures. Starts at 300, compression, you're up almost 900 Kelvin. Then you go almost to 2,000, back to 780 Kelvin. So those temperatures look reasonable. And internal energy is a function of temperature only, as well as enthalpy is a function of temperature only. So you just evaluate those properties, accounting for variable specific heats. So the first question is, what is the heat addition for the cycle Q2 to 3? Is that H? 3 minus H2. And so you just know that you need to use enthalpies for the heat addition. And you, there's the difference between those two values for that heat addition, OK? What about uh, the second one? What is the net work for the cycle in kilojoules per kilogram? Work net. You can calculate work 1 to 2 plus 2 to 3 plus 3 to 4, or you can just do that's equal to Q net, and Q net is Q 2 to 3 plus Q 4 to 1. I already have from part A 2 to 3, so Q 4 to 1 is what is Q 4 to 1? Is it, what is it? Is it U or H? Difference in U's or difference in H? It's difference in U. Is it U4 minus U1 or is it U1 minus U4? Well, uh, right there, uh, when you do the auto and diesel cycle and write the first law down for that process, all right. Naturally, when you have a closed system, it's a delta U over there. The only time that it turns into a delta H, like right here, is because there is a non-zero work, and it can be evaluated as a P delta V, and when you bring it over to the other side, constant pressure work, then it becomes a delta H, and that always throws students for a loop. Thank you for asking. It gave me an op another opportunity to repeat it. And what percent of students will botch it on the final exam? Too many. Too many. Too many. So hopefully um, your question helps more than just yourself. Um, so. Are the last two cycles the same for diesel? Uh, three to four and four to one? Yes, that's right. The only difference is three to four is an expansion. Auto goes the whole way, the, like the inverse of the compression stroke. But the the diesel only goes from V3 to V4, which is not as uh, large of an expansion. Um, does that make sense? You, you only had to expand from here to here for 3 to 4 versus way back here to here for 3 to 4 for the auto. So those volumes of ratios will look like um, a multiplication of both the compression and the cutoff ratio. For example, uh, V4 divided by V3 is V4 divided by V2 times V2 divided by V3, which is R divided by RC. When you use that in the cold air analysis, you'll see, well, why is it before it was just R? Now it's R over uh, R sub C. That's why. So uh, so which one was right? Was this one right or 1 minus 4, right? 
So it's u1 minus u4, true? And that is a negative uh, quantity. And then you have this negative quantity added to the positive quantity, which still should be overall positive because it's a net it's a, it's a net QN network out. Okay, what is the compression ratio? Well, they didn't give it to us. And the other problem, they told us up front what was the compression ratio. But here they give you a table of properties. So the compression ratio, we just recall, okay, the compression ratio is V1 divided by V2. True? Is that true? And is V1 always RT1 divided by P1? Because it's always an ideal gas. Likewise, V2 is that RT2 divided by P2. You cancel the R's. They're the same. And so you just take T1 divided by T2. So it's T1 over T2 times P2 over P1. And you get the compression ratio R. Just using the pressures and temperatures. Does that make sense? What about the cutoff ratio? R sub C. Well, go back and say, is that V3 over V2? And then substitute for V3. That would be um, T3 over P3. Likewise, V2 would be T2 over P2. This simplifies a little bit because look at the pressure at 2 and the pressure at 3. They cancel. And we're back with the equation we had before that the cutoff ratio is T3 over T2. So I just take the numeric value of this temperature divided by that temperature, T3 divided by T2, and I have the cutoff ratio.